This is Full Time. I am Max. I am here in my self-quarantine. I'm going a little bit laid back right now with my Sunday best. I hope you're enjoying your self-quarantine and your social distancing. I'm not here to tell you what to do. You've heard it from enough people. I turn on my social media and it's every people from every walk of life with a long bill of goods. I get it. We're doing our best. I hope everyone's listening, but sometimes you just need to walk away, right? Not, not, not feel like being patronized. You're not being patronized, but it, it's coming from everywhere. So you're not going to get it here, but we know what we're doing, right? This is a big week. When this all started and sports uh, leagues and games started getting postponed, canceled, we started to ask when they might come back. As the reality of the expanse of COVID-19 came out, we thought May, and then we quickly said June, July, and then, you know, said maybe hopefully summertime. And then there's another school of thought says no sports for the rest of the year until there's no cases left which obviously would solve the problem, but destroy every sport in the process. It's, it, it can't be done. Now, I, I want to, I, I would like to think I fall in somewhere in the middle. I want sports to be back. I think it's essential the business of sports come back for so many reasons, but it does have to be safe. This weekend, and I'm not, this is not where I'm saying it should happen sooner, but this weekend I heard a few things that told me, whether I wanted it or not, or whether you want it or not, Sports will be coming back sooner than later. Okay, this is what happened. President Donald Trump met with all the commissioners and heads of the North American Sports League and gave them a vote of confidence and a lot of encouragement that sports will be back. Said to the NFL, they're going to start their season on time in September and other leagues that, hey, there is uh, a light at the end of this tunnel, certainly for the return of your sports. We talked about this Premier League plan where they'd have a behind closed doors completion of their season at a certain location. That is now in advanced talks. It got greenlit and now they are speaking, the Premier League is speaking with the government on a way to do it. It's going to happen, they initially said, sometime in June. This is something I didn't really hear until now. When Italy got hit as hard as it did, no one ever brought up the Serie A coming back when players started getting positive tests. We almost thought if there was going to be a league that wouldn't see the end of the season, it was definitely going to be Italy. Well, this weekend I heard, for the first time since all of this happened, Serie A season could be allowed to finish as late as October, suggesting maybe a sep September, an early September start to finish those last few rounds. That's giving yourself a little bit more cushion. Sports is coming back. And if I had to venture a guess, it would be here in June. People want it back. It, it brings a lot back, and I'll get to that here shortly. Now, a lot of the sports are going to be behind closed doors. And that may work for a few weeks, but it is not sustainable. You need the fans, or no one wants to see sports. No one will want to see sports. This is the behind closed doors gets people going. I mean, we, we, we have to think about when people get in the stadium. It's going to be behind closed doors. I imagine they'll go half capacity before they actually put people shoulder to shoulder in stadiums. But we want to see the beginning of that hopefully soon, and I think it's coming. Speaking of no fans, I did watch WrestleMania. Oh, yeah, Macho Madness. Sometimes I can't understand myself, but I'm coming to get you. WrestleMania. WWE, really the only sports or entertainment vehicle that is still going on, except for the Belarusian Soccer League, still going strong. And while this was beautifully produced, WrestleMania, and beautifully executed, the lack of fans there was hard to escape. And it worked here, but you can continue to do that for some time. Eventually, it just, it just can't work. You need the fans. But we could start, because you don't go from zero to 60. And... What I am seeing is telling me that sports will be coming back here soon. The NBA is planning, the NBA could be playing behind closed doors. And they came out with this weekend on an idea to engage their fans where their big stars will play a behind closed door self quarantine game of horse, you know, where you match your shots. Maybe Steph Curry versus LeBron James. Sounds great. It sounds great because sponsors will buy in. I think some people will watch. That's important because the business of sports is important because it creates a lot of jobs. Uh, 
I'm going to get to another story here, but I'll just bring this up here. I'm having a lot of conversations with my colleagues all over, and a lot of these guys are freelance, and a lot of folks aren't working, facing furloughs, facing laid off, uh, no money coming in. This is a situation where uh, this de determines a lot of people's livelihood in every walk of life. But right now, there seems like a, an opportunity for other areas to get back before sports because sports involves this gathering. But anyway, the, the NBA is going to do that, a horse competition. And as I said, it'd be good for the sponsors, but I do not want to see that. I do not miss sports that much. I will let my appetite go even further before I want to watch a game of horse. Good luck to the NBA, but not for me. If you're these leagues and sports, accentuate what you have. E-gaming. Find a creative way to do it, like NASCAR did. Your library of sports. You can continue to do that. But if you're, if you're eager to do that, don't want to alienate your fans because you, you want them to have the right appetite when they come back. All right, now we go to the United Kingdom and some big stories. There is a government job retention a scheme, probably it's called a scheme. I had to double, triple check. They still call it a scheme. It was a bit strange to say that. Scheme gives a negative connotation, I don't think. They have a scheme which, much like in the United States, they're finding ways to recoup the funds, whether it's taxes or what have you. And for those who lose their job, they can pay their wages, I think 80% of their wages, over a month or two months or what have you. It's a program that's going to help a lot of people. Some people will not go through the cracks. Now, the government themselves are going in many directions, including asking professional soccer players to concede 30% of their wages. Wayne Rooney was critical of it and he said he wants to help and he wants to give the money but he kind of wants to know where it's going. Gary Lineker said, why don't you call on the wealthy to help instead of picking on footballers? The money has to go to the right place. We've seen the generosity from some teams like Barcelona and Atletico Madrid but that's a handful of clubs where guys are making astronomical wages and they can do that. This doesn't apply to every team, but everyone would have to chip in at some point. Whether it comes to the government or the, the players, I, the players have to do a better front for me if I want to get on board with them because they're not the victims here. The victims are the people who I just mentioned who aren't working, who went from making this money one day to zero dollars coming in to their income. People laid off furloughs. This is, these are the folks that we got to find a way to help. And I don't want this defensive attitude with folks telling me, no, no, no. Why don't the wealthy do it? Because I think the wealthy are. I think they may not cross the board and they've had a lot of breaks. Manchester City, for instance, are going to pay the salary. Not everyone is as generous as Manchester City in this case or have pockets as deep as they can. And I would find it hard to believe that these owners and so forth are not finding a way to, to chip in, to say that blindly. 30% of the wages... I think sounds relatively fair, but let's make sure it's going to the right place. I will say we did have one sports story. One, <laughs> one soccer story to share. Manchester City investigating Kyle Walker. He and a friend paid for two sex workers to meet them during this COVID-19 pandemic. Prior to that, there's screams of hypocrisy as Walker on social media plead for people to follow the UK government advice to stay indoors, self-isolate. And then he goes on and he has two sex workers. By the way, sex workers is an expression I, I don't think I can ever get used to saying. Right? It's a bit blunt. I mean, I know it is what it is. And I've gotten some arguments with people on that today. But I thought we, I thought we agreed. Is it prostitutes? I don't know why I'm whispering. Sex workers. Look, Kyle Walker made a mistake. And he should be reprimanded because the belief is, all right, now you start that not flattening the curve. You're expanding because people are crisscrossing. And he's not egregiously doing anything where he's like getting on a plane and flying all over and going to different countries and going out and meeting sex workers. <laughs> but he did, what he did was wrong. But for people to be, hip, to be upset that he's hypocritical, he, he has to say those things. He has to. It came out and he had to say it, but let's not hold a grudge against him. It's tough being single for Kyle Walker. He's young once and he wants to enjoy it. 
I mean, I, I take solace. I have my family here. I love it. But being single's got to be difficult. And being a, a sex worker, I mean, a lot of industries are, are taking a huge hit. I think that might be the top of the list. There's, I mean, Kyle Walker is probably the only person in game. I mean, that, that industry has got to be at zero. I think there's some sympathetic figures in this story. So I will not rake him over the coals. But be more careful next time. And let's all do our part. This is a big week. And when we get back to the other end, we're going to feel better. All right? Another week under our belts. I will be here. Please subscribe to Full Time on my YouTube page, Max Bredos. And we'll continue to have a nice discourse.